founding fathers got it right when they said we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Life from conception in the story. Yeah. <laughs> Liberty based upon the Constitution. Some people want to try and rewrite the Constitution. Some people want to try and make it up as they go, including this president. All we need to do is reread the Constitution and enforce the Constitution. Those are the liberties that the Founding Fathers intended for us to have. And the pursuit of happiness, not based upon entitlement, but based upon empowerment. My mother and my father both walked off of small farms at the age of 18, literally with just the clothes on their back. They walked off different farms, but they both walked off little farms. They raised my brother and I in Atlanta, Georgia. And when they were raising us in Atlanta, Georgia, there were three values that we were taught, we were showed, demonstrated, lived, that you could do anything you wanted to do in this great nation if you first believed in God. Secondly, believe in yourself. And thirdly, believe in the greatest country in the world. Some people may not, not think so, but let me tell you how I feel about the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. We are an exceptional nation. Yes, we yes. And we got that way because of our values. Mom and dad, they wanted to pursue their American dream, and they did. They pursued their American dreams using the only kind of equity they had, which was sweat equity. Dad worked three jobs. Mom was a domestic worker. Dad worked those three jobs until he could provide for the family with two. He worked those two until he could provide for the family with one. And at the same time, he was saving the money from one of those jobs to pursue his dreams. One of his dreams was to be able to buy a whole house for the family. You know, we grew up in Atlanta. Six-room house, three rooms on one side, three rooms on the other side, with a wall going down the middle. So my brother and I used to ask Dad, Dad, why don't you live in a half a house? <laughs> dad said, it's a duplex. <laughs> but Dad, we only live in half of it. He said, it's a duplex. <laughs> and I'll never forget the day that Dad came home and told my mother, my brother and I, to get in the car. We got in the car. Then not argue with Dad. We got in the car, and Dad drove west on Bankhead Highway, and about... 25 or 30 minutes later, he pulled up in front of a little house on a little street called Albert Street. It's the third house on the right. Little brick house. Not attached to any other house. And Dad announced to the family, this is our new home. We said, what? I was in the eighth grade. My brother was in the sixth grade. We jumped out of the car, ran up to the house. Door was locked. We couldn't get in. We were just running. We were excited. <laughs> Ran up to the house, dad got out of the car, walked up to the house very proudly, put the key in the front door, don't you know, went inside and told us it's got two bedrooms, one for you boys and one for your mom and me, and I'm going to buy y'all twin beds. We thought we'd die and go to heaven. <laughs> twin beds? You see, when we were living in that duplex, my brother and I slept on a cot in the kitchen. And every morning we'd argue over who's supposed to take it up, and every evening we'd argue over who's supposed to let it out. 
That's how I began to sharpen my early debate skills. <laughs> I knew I would need those debating skills at some point. My mother was in tears of joy. But she never dreamed that she'd have a house like that to make our home. And my dad saved enough money to buy that house, which was one of his dreams. And he didn't tell my mother he had saved enough money. He didn't even tell my mother he'd gone out and bought the house. Don't try that today, man. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> you living in that sucker by yourself. <laughs> this is 2011. Imagine going home telling your wife, oh, honey, I got a surprise for you. I bought you a new house. He goes, what new house? The one you hadn't seen? Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Wife starts moving that neck with them hands on the hips. Me and you are in a heap of trouble. <laughs> heap of trouble. But that was their dream, and they were able to achieve one of their American dreams. In the greatest country in the world. And today, the American dream is under attack. 